Okay, everybody, uh, let's get started here. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Ken Wojerski. I'm a director for Car Technologies uh, based in the United States in the Dallas, Texas area. Um, and uh, I've been with Car for about five months. I'm also a uh, former account executive for SAP. Um, so this, uh, this feels, feels real good kind of being back home. A uh, few things I just wanted to say about CAR before we get going for those who aren't familiar with us is that we are an SAP pure play company. The only implementations we are uh, involved with are SAP solutions. So if SAP didn't exist, we would not exist. Um, we have a, uh, a tool that was developed in-house by two of the CAR founders called K-Turn, which you'll hear a little bit more about today. Um, I won't steal any of the thunder, but it's one of the main reasons uh, that I was very interested in joining CAR. Uh, CAR is making their presence known in the U.S. right now, uh, but we are a 16-year-old company with worldwide uh, presence with over 1,000 employees and nearing 2,000 SAP implementations. Uh, so we have uh, had a lot of success in the global market. And we are SAP's newest VAR uh, in, in the U.S. and Canada market. So with that said, a uh, couple of uh, housekeeping notes here is that this session is being recorded um, and all participants are being muted on entry. Um, we can send you the recording and slides uh, after the, the, uh, the webinar is over. Please uh, ask all your questions through the Q&A box. Uh, yeah, avoid using the chat. Um, because a lot of times that sometimes doesn't get noticed. Uh, and do please answer all the poll questions that, that come up because that, that helps us uh, kind of edit uh, our uh, webinars going forward. So let's get started. Uh, today our speaker is going to be George Guardian. Uh, George is one of the co-founders of, of CAR Technologies with over 25 years SAP experience and uh, with the experience I have and getting to know George and speaking with George, he is definitely one of the more educated people uh, of SAP technologies that I've spoken with. So with that said, George, let me turn it over to you. And uh, thank you again for everybody joining. Thank you, Ken. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, for joining the webinar. Let's get started. That's about me. So we we'll Go quickly to the agenda. Uh, today's agenda is um, about, importantly, two main items. Uh, one is the paths that normally are taken towards an S4 HANA transformation. And uh, out of my experiences of handling customer conversations, of handling multiple uh, projects and also pilots, uh, right from about 2015 onwards, so we've seen quite a lot. So I, I thought it would be good to pick up about eight strategies uh, that would help to prepare going forward in an S4HANA transformation. So that's probably the meat of today's agenda. And then, of course, why CarTech and what are the specific areas of interest that we bring to the table? We'll be discussing that towards the end. So this is how I probably take this through. Some of the questions that you already know the answer to, I'm, uh, I'm just making sure that uh, we start uh, on the right note. So I'm pretty sure you all know why your enterprise needs to digitally transform by now. Uh, is s hana the right choice? Or how, how quickly or how should I learn about your innovations to stay ahead? I'm pretty sure you've probably made up all answers to all of this. So the assumption is you know the answers here and you've made a decision going forward to S4. And once you've made that choice, we, we really want to help you in trying to put that part of the puzzle together to see how that roadmap going forward is going to look like. Where do you start? What kind of problems you would encounter? What are the paths that you'd normally take being an enterprise of, of your definition? And how do you basically go about the small things that you would eventually encounter. So this is something that we've seen across uh, multiple years, at least I have seen across this for the last five and a half years. So uh, with that kind of experience and, and the talking to about 
I would say I would I've personally had conversations with at least about 40 customers across, uh, also primarily in the US. And, and, and I'd, I'd like to bring that on a very high level in, in this short interaction that I wanted to share with all of you. Okay. Now, normally the paths that are taken towards S for HANA are uh, somewhere from pure brownfield to greenfield or somewhere in between hybrid. You know, again, this is, uh, it does not mean that one size uh, fits all, it never is the case, but these are typically the approaches that, that companies take going, going forward in Despohana once they've made that decision to, to digitally transform. So typically, uh, the first conversations around Esfahana normally involve internal teams and they start talking about system conversions because that's the oldest uh, possible way of quickly getting over from, uh, from ECC to S4. And that's also probably the safest approach because traditionally coming from ECC backgrounds, teams don't want to let go of anything in the past. You know, So they want to take everything and go. They want to go to the new house called Esfahana. So... Uh, a quick, quick shot conversion is probably the best way. So that's how discussions normally start. And then other factors start weighing in and then the talks come about, can we do a little bit of hybrid? Can we do a little bit of mix and match? Can we do a shell conversion? Maybe we have to set up a pilot first. We will stand up something, one part of the business. We are such a large business. So in one part of the business, we'll try and do this. All these questions start coming up and then also the question of selective data transition. Can we take some parts of the data? Can we leave out all the old ones? All of these discussions start coming forward. Of course, everything is a valid point. Every discussion is very valid. The point is, according to what you are, where you are, and what you want to go to, or where you want to go to, your timeline, uh, and of course, also decisions around uh, uh, your cutover timeline, for example, and, and how old your system is, all of this come into play there. And in some cases, customers already have decided to go greenfield. Maybe they're a very large install. Maybe, maybe they have uh, such an old amount of data. Maybe they, they really don't have too much of data in terms of size, but the install itself is probably 20 plus years old. You know? So in those cases also, they've probably decided, let's dump the whole thing and move towards greenfield and try to retrieve as much as possible from the old install. But they probably want to go greenfield. So we've seen all of this, but these are typically the parts that are taken forward uh, once, once the customers decide to go that way. And each of that, of course, like I told you, have their own uh, pros and cons towards it. What I tried to do is in the next slide, I tried to sort of uh, box some of the customers and their types and sizes around like this. But again, it's not, not necessarily uh, always 100% true like this, but in, in, in most cases, this is true, and, and that is what uh, I have seen also. You know, when, when there's a large enterprise with huge amounts of data and thousands of users spread across the world, uh, the first thing that I encounter when I talk to them is, we don't have too much of time that we can afford to on a cutover weekend. That's the first thing that comes up. Of course, we have large amounts of data, we have large amounts of custom code, uh, we don't know really what we want to dump and go forward. And, and we are too busy. The teams are running multiple projects. We are spread out across the world. And we want to quickly go in here. We've made a deal with SAP. We want to quickly go in here. Uh, what's the best way and how, how quickly we can get there? So these are the kind of discussions that come up in large enterprises. Uh, so that, uh, that's, that's a sort of a way to go for it. But I've seen this more and more in discussions with large enterprises going that way again that's not a that's not a fix for every large enterprise but maybe eight out of ten choose to go that way they go for the conversion route and at the other extreme i've seen mid-market enterprises probably not so old or sometimes very old installs relatively medium number of users database database sizes under maybe one or two terabytes something like this they say that it's it's it's, it's time uh, to dump the old one. We don't want to take this. We are not, uh, we want to really assess things and go forward. We have a roadmap towards digitally transforming. And then we want to, we want to take one step at a time. So we want to go greenfield or, or somewhere in between, we want to do something. But 
these enterprises typically uh, they're not so large they're not so big in terms of data or users uh, probably they are a mid-size install in terms of the age of the install but they have they've for some reason that fits them quite well so they they typically want to go that way and and a fresh start a green field seems to be much better for them and also you have to remember that these kinds of customers don't have large internal teams so they are they're more dependent on on SIs to come and help them so the most logical thing for them to do would be to go that way there are also companies in the in between range they these are the ones again they are probably global companies global installs multiple installs multiple business models and there the discussion comes up let's 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 put up a a sort of a pilot for s4 in in one of our business units maybe a small one but a representative business unit uh, probably spread across a couple of countries and we'll put it up first and we see how to go about it from there and how to how to bring in the rest of it in there you know that's that's another approach that i've seen companies taking as well so that's about putting up a pilot system first and and in that case mostly it's it's a hybrid option so they mostly go in for some specialized tools with data transition they also bring in some of the custom custom code from their some of the customization from the old system old dc system but then you also have to remember these these kinds of companies have more time at their disposal they want to really go one step at a time one business at a time probably and make that decision a little bit stretched and longer they want to really see the benefits of of using as farhana uh, within their company but at arm's length you know probably put it up for for one one uh, one associate company or one joint venture company and then see how it goes and again there are probably large internal teams that they that they can help with and and those kinds of companies go this way so this is again this is what this is what we have seen talking to customers over the last 5 5 6 years uh, the possible routes that that the size of the company and the nature of the company how they want to go forward so this is another important point now again the main points of going towards either brownfield or greenfield or hybrid i've tried to just summarize it uh, in 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 the charts that you see here so typically again when 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 customers want to go greenfield they want to do a complete reimplementation uh, they want to do some uh, some or all of the old master data with them maybe do some copy of that do some cleansing around it uh, of course open items come in but uh, they have a very clean start what to say that uh, they they would probably start with best practices or sometimes they also start with some model company and 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 probably do a little bit of deviations maybe for legal or fiscal reasons elsewhere so there you have completely new business process uh, transformation coming in so that's completely from a from an impact standpoint it's very high historical data uh, changes there there will be complete changes to business process and 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 the data model there uh, because they're going completely from ecc to s4 uh, via the greenfield implementation route custom code you don't have to really worry about custom code uh, in this case you can probably bring in some of the old ones or you can dump that also uh or you can start again uh, fresh here migration option you have different options you have you can either go phased or big bang downtime again this is like a new install going live so downtime is really not uh, such a big of a problem when you go greenfield but when you go the other end of it is really brownfield which means complete conversion so you technically convert the existing system you retain all the business all the custom code all the historical data and you go with one big bank cut over the time taken for conversion and validation is is really of importance here and and that is also one main factor that drives it like i told you the larger installs will probably be very 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 picky about the 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 cut over time uh, the downtime the real downtime so i i still remember the very initial conversions that we did the downtime was pretty long uh, the conversion to cockpit was not uh, was rudimentary at start but the last ones that we did for some of the largest customers uh, we've even gone live uh, with a lot of technical tweaking in the custom co- uh, in the in the uh, conversion cockpit we were able to even uh, with the help of sap of course we were able to convert close to 10 or 12 terabytes of data in under 40 hours of downtime effectively but if you look at where we started off even for about 3 or 4 terabytes of data 
I remember the first conversions that we did, production conversions that we did way back in uh, 2016. I think uh, even for two or three terabytes of data, our downtime, production downtime was close to about 72 hours. So again, the, the conversion cockpit has, has, has gone through a lot of migrations, uh, a, a lot of enhancements over the years. I think SAP has fine-tuned it quite well. Uh, you also have options for selective data transition within the custom cockpit as well. So there, there is a lot that you can do. And, and between the initial versions and now, there are also a lot of things that you can actually do when the system is up itself. So there's a, there's a lot of conversion activities that can actually happen during the uptime also, thereby uh, eventually reducing the real downtime that's needed. And if you're able to give in a lot of more power to the, to the conversion programs at the conversion point by adding dedicated application servers, I think at that point also you can speed up the conversion. So these are technically more advanced topics. We'll probably get in that at a later point in time. But then that is how you go conversion and brownfield. Of course, you have, to, you have to go big bang. That's the only option you have because you're taking all of your data and moving in. Uh, that's, that's the last one. And then the middle one is, is hybrid. Basically, it's, 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 a, it's a pick and choose of things. You know? So this is, you, have, you can uh, start with a shell conversion and you can probably get in with, uh, uh, with, the, uh, with best practices model and then using some of the... Uh, uh, selective data transitions, you can bring in a, a little bit of existing data from ECC, and you can also try and get some kind of a historical data as well. But again, here, this is normally done within an enterprise for uh, sort of a pilot. That's, that's, also, that's a normal use case that I've seen here before the customer decides to go full Big Bang. And again, the time taken to migrate transactional data and the open item data is, is a very important aspect here when it comes to uh, the downtime at, at cutover. But there is one additional problem here that you have to have really have to uh, start validating the data at both sides uh, when you do this. So this is because you're, you're, you're taking a, a time slice of data or you're taking an org slice of data and, and then putting it backward, putting it forward into the new system. So there, of course, there is a little bit of, uh, of, of a validation and that's also where uh, K-turn as a tool, I'll be talking about it a bit later. That will come in a big time for help. So these are the possible technical aspects uh, that I wanted to highlight on the path towards s hana that customers normally take. Now, coming to the main element of, of today's uh, webinar, uh, I wanted to split this down into probably eight different parts, uh, whereby I wanted to just give a very high-level input into into each of this so that um, when, when you've decided to go as for HANA route, uh, you, I also wanted to make sure to tell you the experiences that we had and the most important points that customers normally come back to us with. And I've listed, down, listed that down in about um, eight different strategy points so that we can discuss a little bit of that in, in detail as we go forward with each of this. Okay. Now, in, in, in almost nine out of 10 conversations that I've had with customers, the elephant in the room almost happens to be custom code. Every customer, nine out of 10 customers come back to me uh, in, in any discussion, they come back and say, custom code, custom code. We have so much of custom code. We have 20,000 of them. We have 40,000 of them, things like this. So this, and some of them come back and say that I, I really don't know how much I, is, is already there because this probably uh, goes back like 25 years and I've been here only for the last four. I don't even know what's there, what's in there. And, and the team has also turned up at least two times. So we don't have anybody here uh, who actually knows what's in there. So that's a huge problem for us. So how do we even approach this? Now, this is not the first time I've heard things like this. So we've heard this many, many times. Now, this, again, like I said, this is really the elephant in the room where customers don't know what to do with custom code. So the biggest question is, what's, what's out there first? Will it really work when I move to S4? Will it break down? Will it make my testing much more expensive, much more uh, stretched out on timelines? Will I really need all of this? I don't know any of this. How can you help me with all of this? Now, this was the question that came forward to us uh, many, many times. You know? And also... Does it really make sense to pull along everything or it's just like accumulating technical debt on the new system? 
Does it really make sense? Or even if I decide to take everything, will it not break down? And even let, let's assume if I have to fix it, how much do I have to fix? Do I have to fix everything? Do I have to have a separate team to fix this? Is there a separate budget that I need to fix it? And does it really make sense to even fix it? Because I, in reality, it really does not make sense to fix everything. That's the first, that's the first part. Uh, even if you fix it, you're not optimizing it to run on S4. So typically what will happen is you will probably need not fix everything. Some of it will automatically run. Some of it you'll need to fix so that it basically runs. And the last step, of course, is to adapt it so that you optimize the custom code to work more efficiently on S4HANA. Now, this is also where Kturn comes in. With, with, with the specialized tool sets that Kturn has, it will be able to identify your unused custom codes. It will be able to also do a little bit of code adaptation. It will be able to automatically adjust code to work with S4. Of course, on top of this, you would also need to do some manual stuff to optimize code to work effectively in S4. Now, that's something that we advise not to take up at stage one. What we normally tell our customers is move over to S4 with the custom code that you have. Delete the ones that you don't. The tool will help you to identify what are the ones that you really don't need. So maybe you don't need to take them or just delete them. Clean them up before you go either way, no? before you go conversion or hybrid or new implementation, whichever route you go, custom code is still a bigger problem. In, in, in conversion, it's, it's a huge problem. Uh, in the other two approaches, you have a choice of actually taking some things or dumping something. In, in, in all the cases, it is better to remove unused code and then take the ones that are really needed, correct them, and just correct them so that it works in S4, but not don't optimize them in one go itself because once you move in there, there will be other factors that influence the code optimization that happens in S4. So that can be as stage two, where you can optimize the code as you go forward. And it's, it's not such a big thing when you opt to optimize code. But I also have to warn you here, because in, in one or two of our experiences, when we tried to optimize that code, it actually ended up costing us much more. So what we also did was we just simply had to dump it and look for some kind of new alternatives and in some cases, it also will be that the code that you used in the past 20 years ago is probably already available in S4 as new functionality. Now, this is also where Kturn comes in to identify that for you. So Kturn will come in and tell you that this code you really don't want because there is a similar function in S4 that you tried to build on your own probably 18 or 20 years ago, but now it's available in S4, maybe not 100%, but it probably will match you to about 80% of that. So, and then it's a choice of a customer. Do I have to really migrate it, correct it and, and make it use in S4 or, or adapt it or optimize it rather than use the new one and with the new Fury version. So it makes it much more easier to do that. So that is about custom code. This is the first thing that I wanted to tell you on. The second is about data. This is invariably the other thing that comes up after custom code. So after custom code, what comes up is, is, is data. There's a lot of talk about uh, how to handle data and data migration strategy and what to do when each of these points come up. You know? Of course, we talk a lot about archiving, customizing data, historical data, master data and transaction data. So all, all of this actually comes in and what to do in each of these cases or each of these scenarios. So I thought I'd give a very quick uh, high level overview of, of what we'll probably do in each of these cases. So when we, when we really look at historical uh, ar archive data. So what you would want to normally do is you want to archive or purge the unnecessary data. If it's archive is a little bit of an older term. Uh, these days we have started telling our customers really not to go in for a huge archiving project because the value that you get out of it is not so great. And it's really not worth the time or the money that's spent on it. So it's, it's better to purge the unnecessary data that is there. We've seen in many customer installs, there's so, so much amount of data uh, that can actually be cleaned up prior uh, to, to, a, to a conversion, for example. So there, uh, the, the reducing the data footprint when, before moving into a uh, S4HANA system is really important. So that way it becomes more important. So the second thing that you'd want to really look at is customizing. Now, if, if this, this mainly comes in when you are talking about the hybrid model or the new implementation. So 
in 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 this case you really want to know what what are the custom objects uh, the customizing objects that you want to go forward understand the migration objects there prepare a data extraction strategy around it of course there are various tools that you can help uh, that can help you do that as well and more more critically define the roles and responsibilities of who does what because when you move customizing data you're you're basically tampering with the structure of the organization itself and this is is also handled as part of the uh, the selective data transition tools that sap gives you or also some of the other vendors give you but that the, the roles and responsibilities become very very important when you're talking about customizing data and that is is really uh, a point that you have to uh, keep in mind before you engage any third party tools because a lot of that responsibility also comes back to the user organization now again coming back to historical data there is uh, again kturn helps you in validating the historical data before the move there can be a lot of historical data that you want to move as well like uh, like for example pricing conditions and things like that you know so this is uh, this can be adapted this can be changed to the new requirements so that is also possible but then again kturn will help you in validating the data between ecc and s4 master data is a very very important topic that that again comes up along with the data migration strategy uh, typically these are i'd like to tell you very quickly about two important points that we normally tell our customers the first thing is around business partners uh, so we have seen many installs where you this we still work with uh, customer and vendor masters so it is always advisable to get your business partners in ecc already done before you move to s4 of course you can also do this as part of conversion uh, in a conversion scenario uh, but it's 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 all is is always better to get your uh, business partners done up in ecc much before and it's, it's definitely possible uh, there is no limitation or restriction on getting uh, activating business partners in ecc and we always advise our customers to do that that's one one instance of of uh of master data the other instance is of course uh, when we talk about new gl uh, we've had customers coming up uh and and asking us about new gl uh in 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 the in the process of conversion you have to get your new gl up and running before you move to s4 hana so you have to remember this if you're if you're on classical you really have to move to new gl as a first step prior to moving to s4 hana so this is an important uh, prior activity that you have to do so this this and of course there are a lot of technical enhancements of 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 upgrading stacks if you are a connected environment like for example if you have srm and crm and all of that connected to ecc there you have to have also have uh, some technical enhancements done up and there are also a little bit of other prerequisites as well but all of that don't qualify in the mass data category but in any case mass data is primarily on business partners and and uh, and the new gl scenario so you have to really standardize that before before the move and when you're talking about uh, transaction data you talk about aging <coughs> aging of transaction data and if you really want to take them over normally we don't do this we only take in um, the open items uh, in in the case of uh, new implementation or also the hybrid scenario but in the case of conversion you take the whole thing and go but if you want to if you want to take some part of your closed older transaction data that's also possible which we've also done in a couple of our customer cases we have moved them in a in in a hybrid environment you can move them with with the selective data transition tools i have one more slide a little bit later talking about that but you have to remember that that's also a lot of validation that's involved there uh, but it's definitely doable and i i i come about more and more customers talking about uh, transactional data that they want from previous years to be moved in as well so that's also a possibility which was a little bit difficult in the past i should say but now we have much better tools uh, from sap that help us do this now this is the one how how sdt helps you in in the new implementation and also in the hybrid scenario so if you if you take the new implementation scenario with sdt with with the selective data transition you will be able to bring in uh, uh, historical data historical transaction data you'll also be able to merge and harmonize process data processes into your new system so basically time slice org slice all of this is possible when you do the sdt but this is definitely possible both in a new implementation scenario and in a hybrid scenario as well 
But the, the advantage of doing it on a hybrid scenario is it's, it's mostly software driven. It can be very fast and flexible and, and a lot of other things. And, and, and with, with some of the specialized vendors out there, they're also audit compliant and it reduces the project risk and timeline. So you can get there much faster. In a new implementation scenario, of course, you, you will have a lot of effort otherwise to get uh, the historical data in. There is quite a high business risk as well when you're talking about older data because that will pop up at the point of go live and that can, that can really impede your go live as well. Can also include high process innovations if you want to bring them in from the older side. There is a cost option as well if you want to think of SDT in, in a new implementation with older data coming in. Again, the advice here would be try and avoid that as much as possible. Uh, of course, it's, 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 if it's a real must, and in some cases, we have seen some fiscal uh, needs that they really need to have. And in, in those cases, if, if it's unavoidable, then you can definitely use SDT. But if you're going a new implementation route, it's always better to go with uh, open items from a transactional standpoint and ignore uh, the previous year's data or the closed and historical data because you can always bring them on from the analytics standpoint, which we have also done at another customer location where we have moved about 10 years of historical data into uh, a custom solution that we did for them on, on, on the BTP platform. So that's also possible. The next item that I wanted to talk off with is, is with Fiori, the strategies for adopting uh, SAP Fiori. This is another important point that always comes up in the discussion. Now this, uh, I'll go through all of this pretty quickly. Um, hold on, okay. Now, before we go in here, you also have, you have to, you have to remember one very important point when, when, when you're talking about Fiori and UX. You always have to remember your first step into S4 from ECC, you will have to have a mix and match of Fiori and GUI. That's always, that's how you normally end up. But there are very few customers that I've seen that they've gone completely Fiori uh, from day one. Uh, it's, it's a nice goal to have, but in, in all reality, it doesn't happen. You have to remember this, you have to keep this in mind. So because of that, you have to really assess and identify the Fiori apps that can be implemented. And remember, it's going to be a role-based approach. It's going to be very, very different from how we used to use SAP GUI in, in the ECC world. So when you want to really assess and identify them, there are, there are multiple ways of doing them. You have to remember that the try and pick up the ones that are Fiori first, which means the ones that are completely Fiori enabled, because there are a lot of apps within Fiori that are basically SAP GUI embedded within them. And now that is not going to give you so much of, 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 of a business advantage when you move forward. So try and pick up all the Fiori first apps. That will have a uniform feel and focus around, and, and that would be also a very good business ad for you. And remember, you can always do the adapt, extend, build. I have another slide on that. You can always do that at a later point in time, but from a first move standpoint into S4, when you're talking about the Fiori strategy, it's always better to go with the standard Fiori apps, most importantly with the Fiori first apps. And you have to always complement that with the existing GUI. Uh, that is always the case, like I told you. So, and also you have to remember to do some, some extensive change management and training around here because eventually for the first years, uh, you will have to deal with both Fiori and with GUI for some time, depending on the complexity of your business and depending, depending on the custom transactions that you have used. So this uh, will probably delay going completely Fiori. So if you've used a lot of custom transactions in the past, so before you start uh, extending them or building them onto new Fiori, that's going to take a while. But again, the suggestion here would be don't do, don't try and consume all of that in the first go. Stretch them out is always better that way. So have a strategy and roadmap for Fiori going forward. And basically this is how you want to do adapt, extend and build. So maybe in the first stage, you can, you can probably try and do a little bit of adaptation because that's, uh, uh, standard built-in option available uh, to, to, to probably do a role change or a process specific need or something like that with, with the in-app extensibility that's possible. The, uh, the second step would be to actually extend it. You, you should be able to extend it with industry specific extensions, uh, breakout options. These are all possible definitely uh, within the existing theory app itself. So that's, that's always possible, but then please take it as, as stage two. 
and you'll also be able to build your own custom Fiori apps going forward. You know, so that's that's always a possibility. But then, if you have trained good internal resources, you can probably do them in in, in phase two or phase two point five or something like that. So in 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 a Fiori roadmap that we normally suggest, we no, we tell them to take the Fiori first apps in the first go, so that the business value that you're able to give the organization, the business is maximum there, as you can see on your screen on the left side. Take the take the ones that are that that showcase first, and also the SAP Fiori first. So because that those two put together gives a lot of new business value. Uh, but again, you also have a change impact there. If you want to go GUI completely or, or take the GUI apps, try and reduce them as much as possible because the new business value that you see in there will be very very less. Uh, again, it's just the change impact that will be there because you will force them to go to Fiori, but once they click in the tile what they normally see is an SAP GUI coming inside. Now that's the kind of thing that we really want to avoid in, in stage one. So try and go for the Fury first ones, which will really give more business value. So, so much for the Fury strategy. The other important element of the strategy that I want to talk of was the integration strategy. So this is, again, an element that comes up in most of the discussions. Uh, of course, as you can see, you have a use case pattern and, and an integration uh, integration options or integration style, which basically goes across process and data, user, and of course, uh, the thing integration, which is basically the IoT and those kinds of things. Again, as you see it in terms of scale time, uh, the definite suggestion would be to, to stick with process integration first, because and a little bit of data that's needed, but that's the very important step that will have to go along with your digital core. It's typically application integration or B2B or business to government. So all of this, all of this is very, very necessary for any digital core to, to be live as well. So in again, in your first step, it would be advisable to, to have a complete assessment of your existing landscape and your architecture. But then always remember, if you have very complex ones, you can only stick to process because we've, we've seen in, in the process part itself, we have seen uh, SFDC integrations, We've also seen integrations with, with data warehousing solutions or again with shop flow solutions. You know? So all of this uh, will itself consume a lot of time because they're directly connected to your digital core. There you don't want to uh, delay those integrations because then your digital core doesn't work properly or you, your, your, your MES system, for, for example, has to be a standalone system. So that, that's, that's really not preferable because it was connected to ECC in the past. Maybe your data part, that you can delay a little bit when it comes to analytics and those kinds of things, which is the next topic. So that can also go to phase two, if you if you will. But then from a process standpoint, it's always better to go with the first phase. Your try and see that all your process touch points are completely met. The user integration part, of course, you can have chatbots and, and mobile integrations and, and different UI integrations there. Again, I would really suggest that you park it to phase two. And the IoT, those kinds of integration areas, again, can probably do at 2 or 2.5 or maybe 3. Uh, you, you might also, in some of your cases, you might also be thinking about Industry 4.0 and, and, and the digital twin and all of that. You know? So at, at those points, there's a lot more of the integration capabilities that you would need. And that is also where your BTP, which is basically your business technology platform, comes in. This platform will be able to do a lot of help for you in that area. So BTP always, please always consider BTP as an essential part of your integration strategy. I tell most of my customers these days, consider this together. Uh, that is also why when you, when a uh, little bit of slides later, you see the rise of the SAP story coming up, which they have put in BTP as a very essential part. Now, what you can do here is, of course, you can, you can connect and optimize. You can do a lot of automation. All of this is possible, but what, what's also possible with SAP with, with BTP is to have add-on processes because this is this can also behave like a, a completely independent platform for development where you where, where there are uh, different uh, platforms available. For example, there is a wonderful platform called Cloud Foundry, which is available within BTP and it can seamlessly connect uh, backwards to S4 HANA for data and for and for workflow and approvals and those kinds of things. So if, if uh, there are many scenarios that are possible. So if your sales guy really wants to have a very quick and short solution or just utilizing 
uh, as for hana customer information or business partner information when he's visiting his customers you don't really have to build so much of of a complete end to end uh, hybrid uh, kind of a solution you can deploy a very small solution for him just for customer order taking or or some kind of a custom info info taking that's always possible with btp so that's the add on to your existing digital co processes can be easily simulated and deployed uh, within the btp solution and can be done very very quickly it can be done in a matter of weeks so again this is something that you really have to take into account but again don't do it as part of your your first go maybe you can do it as part of your once your your core stabilizes in the first four months then you should be able to quickly deploy these kinds of things so take this also a little bit as stage 2 but from a integration standpoint you have to call really concentrate on your process integrations first next comes your your analytics strategy uh, so here again uh, what we tell our customers is as much as possible try and and stick with your espahana cds views because that's very easy to do that's why it says a lot of reduced effort across because in erstwhile systems we had to do a lot of data extraction and also validations across uh there's a lot of process chains i think all of us know all of this in the past for dcc and bw and all of that uh, is a thing of the past when it comes to s4 so you could do a lot of the analytics that you already want there's a lot of pre built analytics as well but e- even if you want more completely it is cds view driven so with cds and s4 on top of s4 so you should be able to quickly make a lot of them pre defined data extractions basically reflect the same content as s4 now the other end of the spectrum is to go to analytics cloud that is also very easy to deploy we have done that we as we speak you know doing it across three customers going live s4 together with analytics and in some customers they want they go they go s4 first and they go uh, maybe a few weeks later they go they go along with the analytics cloud and they connect very well the analytics cloud and s4 they connect very well very seamlessly you don't have any redundancies in between now the other thing is if you have multiple data sources of course you can go the b b for hana route so that's that's definitely possible but again that is a little bit of a complex scenario uh, if you have multiple data sources along with a score coming in so that's a data complete data warehousing solution that you want to have that's also an option but then that's again that's a completely new implementation uh, again our suggestion would be to take it as as, as stage 2 but the, the first things that you can actually do with this as for hana with 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 cds and do as much as possible within the core itself because as for hana gives you all of that a lot of operational stuff can actually be done there but if you want to do a little bit of more nicer things fancier things and and more nice visual representations you can always use a part of the analytics cloud and and the best part is you can still have your data layer in the in the cds part in s4 and you can consume this in the analytics cloud as well even for non standard stuff so even for non standard a uh, data that you have within s4 you can create cds views and use them as part of the extraction within the analytics cloud also so that's also why it, it combines together as a reduced effort if you want to deploy something like the analytics cloud on top so this is again a very essential strategy that you have to think about in your digital transformation now one other element that i wanted to talk of is 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 on a time check very quickly yeah uh, what i want to talk about is is testing you have to remember that whichever way you go to as for hana testing is a very very important strategy that you have to keep in mind because uh, in 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 in, uh, in the way you now see it here we've always insisted on doing a scenario integration testing 1 2 and 3 before you go in for user acceptance some kind sometimes we do 3 sometimes we do 2 but all please remember that that's a very important part and this is also where k turn comes in as as a huge help with with doing a lot of automation testing so again very quickly i will i will talk about that in in the next slides but please remember testing you have to really give it a very good thinking as part of your core strategies for s4 now the last one that i wanted to talk of is with deployment strategies the last one i wanted to talk of is with deployment strategies so with deployment strategies uh rise with sap comes very very close you know it gives you an option of uh, of of different deployments across it also gives you the flexibility uh, to have multiple clouds to 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 sort of choose your own cloud 
Of course, this rise with SAP is, is more of a commercial uh, arrangement that SAP has. But the point here is if you, if you really want to package things, if you really want to have a very quick start, then uh, the suggestion would be to go with rise with SAP. You can, you, not only you have the, uh, the flexibility of cloud deployment, but SAP also gives you a package when it comes to commercials, which, which basically puts the whole thing in, in a subscription model. So it, it basically puts your license, it puts your infra, and it also puts a part of the basis cost that you normally have all in one, <coughs> one subscription model for you. <clears throat> so all of this comes in one subscription package. Not only that, they also give you a starter pack with BTP and with <clears throat> a business network pack. So both of this together, you can have a quick start. <clears throat> you can have a quick start uh, for, for putting up a pilot or something like that. You know, uh, for using BTP and also for using Ariba and those kinds of things. But again, the biggest advantage is the subscription option, not only for license and for infra, but also for a, for a part of the service as well. <clears throat> <coughs> again, here, as for HANA, the flexibility of consumption as a service or as a product. Again, if you, if you see across the degree of standardization and the degree of flexibility, the most important thing that is it gives you here is what we call as the DX SaaS, you know? So it's basically deployment, uh, digital transformation as a service. So it's, it's SAP gives you the entire part bundled together as rise with SAP as a digital transformation itself as uh, along with the startup pack. So you will be able to get quickly onto the digital transformation. It's bundled together as a service itself. You can, you have the choice of doing that as a service or as a product. So again, you can, you can also take some parts of it, but the, the advantage of taking the whole thing together as, as one package is definitely uh, worth considering. That's what uh, we tell our customers now. And of course you have a range of deployment options in the cloud and you can choose from any of them. So this is one last thing that I wanted to tell you. Now, before we end, I really wanted to tell about K-Turn as a tool and how it comes across for an SAP digital transformation uh, to S4 for you. So again, KTURN is, is, uh, is, is our product. We've built this over years of experience that we have, uh, not, only, not only now in the S4 world, but also from ECC days. So what we have done is we have divided them into five different products, actually. We have digital maps, we have projects, we have digital process, labs, and mines. So basically at the start of any journey, there you need to have an assessment and a plan. So that is also where KTURN comes in. Remember, I told you about this earlier itself. If you really want to have a quick look at your custom code, for example, you know, what kind of what's in there? What do I do with it? How is my customization looking like? All of this is basically part of the assessment that KTURN will do. So that's the first part. And then when you really want to start, there is a module there which is called projects, which is basically governing your entire project. So it can, it's, it's basically, breaking down your process uh, methodology and your project methodology together. So both of this come together in, in K-Turn. So that's in a very effective way of actually running your projects. Now the process is basically, you can model processes and you orchestrate them. So that is custom processes uh, adaptation as well. You could also do a little bit of process modeling with, uh, with the digital process. Digital labs is the one that I kept telling you about from, from a testing standpoint. And this is where you have autonomous continuous testing, test case recommendations, and it's completely UPI, you are API driven, you know? So, and there is, there is no uh, bots that go in, nothing like that. It's completely API driven. And this is, and it's continuous testing. So you really have to have a look at this uh, for, for making a very clear strategy for testing around digital labs. And when you want to simulate the impact and forecast, you have an optimized test path. That's where the last one comes in as digital minds. So this is a very important tool that we, we, we really ask our customers to run their projects right from your assessment, value discovery, your preparation, and also from your defined outcomes. So you can also be able to, you will, you will be able to actually deliver heat maps, uh, finalize on the product that has to be implemented. You can also have a complete implementation approach and a deployment plan. All of this 
will be presented by, by KTON. Of course, it follows the, the activate methodology of SAP, uh, which, which is known to everyone, but we really suggest that you have a look at this tool so that you'll be able to plan and execute your transformation in an effective manner. And this, this is about CarTech, what we are. We, we really uh, have a lot of pride in saying this. We are probably the best digital transformation company, uh, SAP digital transformation company, which is, which is really 15 years in the making. We are a market leader. We are an SAP WAR partner. We have multiple Gartner citations as well. So all of that is available and we operate across multiple industries. The whole list is out there and some of our key portfolio. So you can, you can have a whole lot about discussion around these areas. And I probably leave uh, you with some thoughts about what has gone today. Um, we have five minutes, I know, probably a little lesser, but that's about it for today. Thank you all. Uh, if, if there are any questions, I can probably take one or two uh, before we can wind up. Hey, George, this is Ken. Thank you so much. Um, got a few questions that came in from the Q&A. Uh, from uh, Yos uh, Romnan, I'm sure I'm butchering that name. Would you choose the S4 public cloud for the pharma industry? Anybody on the panel? Go ahead, George. Yeah, uh, Yos, uh, is the, the straight answer now would probably be wait and watch. Uh, the S4 HANA public cloud is really not ready for pharma. Um, and it also depends on the type of pharma. If you're a big time pharma, definitely not. If you're probably starting there, probably it's, the best answer is wait and watch now from, an, from a public cloud standpoint. Uh, okay. Thank you, George. And he follows up with, do you always consider an SLO with the existing SAP ECC environment? Yes, that is also an option to consider SLO with an existing EC, ECC environment. Yeah, that is definitely an option to consider as well. Okay, and lastly from Pandey, and I apologize for butchering the name, is Fiori app uh, is ready to deploy or application need to be developed? What about legacy transaction? How will it bring uh, the Fiori app to the Fiori app? Yeah, the Fiori app, um, uh, Rajiv, the Fiori app is basically uh, ready to deploy. Yes, it is uh, basically Fiori application. What you also have to remember is uh, the Fiori, it, it is not a one is to one from the old ECC. You have to remember that uh, it's not a one is to one between a, an, an old SAP transaction in ECC and a Fiori app. It never is. A Fiori app is normally a combination of transactions from the ECC world. That's how it happens. And, and most of the Fiori first transactions are combining a lot of the old transactions that go in. So you, you, that is the first thing that you have to remember. Uh, legacy transactions, if you have Z transactions, uh, of course, they are not part of Fiori. You have to build them. That's why uh, the concept of uh, adapt and change all of that was there. So you have to probably take it in phase two. You have you can do that, but it's it's completely building Fiori apps on your own. It doesn't come automatically, of course. Okay, and then George, one more just came in from Sandeep. What are the limitations to transform in S4 after we do a complete brownfield implementation? Um, once you've done a complete brownfield, which means you have completely converted, uh, from that point you can start. From that point, it's uh, it's it's like a tweaking of the whole system. So once you completely transform, you have to remember uh, when you go uh, brownfield, you're taking everything along with you and going into S4. Uh, so which means all your old customizing, your complete old data structures, your your data model, your your chart of accounts, all of that is going to be there. So you can start changing from there. But then it's it's like it's like changing completely uh, after you go into S4. Uh, but I think it's it, it's definitely not an approach to do. It's because it it's it, it's uh, it, it's a wastage of time as well. It's dual effort. If you really know you want to change it, if you really know that you want to go, you don't need this model. You want to change in the data model, or you want to change in the in the chart of accounts and things like that. I would really suggest you go the hybrid model, because we also seen customers going the hybrid version that way. So if, if, if you know that you want changes in there, please don't go conversion, go hybrid. Great. Hey, George, thank you so much for answering those questions and uh, go get you a glass of water or whatever your favorite concoction is. Um, everybody, I want to thank you for taking time uh, to listen to this 
um, webinar by Car Technology. I, to interrupt. I think there are a few more questions in the chat window. I think uh, we can address them oh. as well before we close up the session. I uh, do not see them, but yeah, if you yeah. see them, Neil, would you please ask George? Sure. Uh, so, George, I'll just quickly read out the questions which we got through the chat window. Uh, so one question from uh, Noel, do you have a standard strategy for bringing developers up to speed with HANA? Ah, okay. There is no standard strategy there because what you have to remember is a development between ECC and S4 is, uh, uh, is slightly different. It's not very different, but it's slightly different. You need to understand this. But I, I've seen uh, a little bit of development uh, courses will help. Uh, but it, it's not so different uh, to make it to make your programs run on S4 is not so different. But like I told you before, if you want to optimize them, that's a different story. But if you really want to make them work, that's not so difficult. But optimization of the of the custom code in S4 that's a different game. You you might need uh, your team will probably need a little bit more uh, hands-on training on that. And uh, yes, we are, we are we are pretty equipped to give you that training as well. Uh, thanks, George. And there's one more question from uh, Tom Rodden. Can you address greenfield versus brownfield? Does CAR have a POV or a method for recommending the approach? Sorry, can you read that again? Can you address greenfield versus brownfield? Mm -hmm. Does CAR have a POV or a method for recommending the approach? Like I told you, I, there is no one size fits all between greenfield and brownfield, but if you ask me if, the, if, if there are the top one that, that really decides uh, going greenfield or brownfield is probably the age of your install. So if you have an SAP system that's 20 years old with a, with a lot of old data, but not so much of data in size, but if you have a system that's 20 years old, please do not go converting, go greenfield. That, I would say that. So any system that you have that's probably already migrated from, from R3 to, to 4.6 to ECC, uh, you already have been through a couple of migration cycles. Your, your, your data, your custom code is probably way too old uh, and your business is probably really transformed uh, between then and now. So if, if, you, if you ask me what is one single criteria to decide, of course there are many, but the topmost criteria to, to decide whether going greenfield or brownfield is simply the age of your install. If you are 20 years old, please consider going greenfield. Uh, thanks, George. And maybe one final question, which has come in from uh, Raji. In an Espahana transformation, how do you decide which is the best choice, on-premises or other options? Other option. Which core module of Espahana, embedded or add-on module, will be scoped for? And uh, how to take care of the legacy interface to replace it by HANA own interpreter. Now, oh, that's a lot of questions. Okay, but the first question is, is, is about uh, deployment option. Uh, definitely, I wouldn't suggest that you do on-prem these days, uh, unless, unless, unless you have a lot of, lot of connected systems together at on-prem. So if you have one or two systems that you're connected together early, then you probably go cloud. Uh, please pick up one of the cloud deployment options the, because uh, the benefits that that come that come with rise with SAP far outweigh all of this. Uh, that's at least for the first question. The second one I, I didn't completely understand, but we can we can take it offline as well. So that that's okay. Okay, then that's it, George. Over to you, Ken. Okay. Well, th again, thanks, and I apologize and not see those um, additional questions, but uh, on the on the screen right now, if anybody has questions or would like to contact. Um, you can reach out to any of the three you see on the screen there. Uh, and again, I just want to thank you and um, please keep an eye out for, uh, for our next webinar. We uh, thank you for attending and look forward to speaking with you in the near term about your transformation. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you, everybody.